Let's start with app architecture. And when I say app architecture, what I really mean is we want the Flutterflow platform to enable you to build complex and expressive user interfaces without sacrificing on Dart or software development best practices. Oops. So to try to push this vision even further, we called up some old friends from the Flutter community. G. Skinner is a really well-known design agency in the Flutter community, and they're known for taking innovative design and combining it with creative coding to create these really wonderful experiences. So we asked the team to push the limits of Flutterflow and see how far they could get with building vignettes or like miniature apps. And now I'm really excited to welcome Jared to the stage to show us what they built. Thanks, Leah. Over the past 20 years, our clients have challenged us to build beautiful apps and experiences to help push the boundaries of their platforms. I'm really excited to show you what we built here today, but it's just a sneak peek. The Flutterflow team is going to get into it throughout the experience today, and they'll show you kind of how it was built. So the first vignette that I have to show off here today, there we go. Uh, it is a multimodal AI app that generates captions for photos. So we had a little fun with this, knowing that the prompt was gonna require a bunch of inputs, uh, we would want really fun custom controls for them. So this kind of challenged us right off the hop. So we focused on creating some custom sliders in here for the emojis, the hashtag amounts, and the overall length. And we wanted to push a little further here for this mood and tone selector. So we added this dual axis control in here. So when you're ready to go, you got it all set up, hit regenerate, prompt goes through, and we get a really fun caption like this. <laughs> so sometimes it works really too well, uh, and we had a lot of fun with this one. The second vignette that we made here was a smart home style app. So we really wanted to pick something that had a really complex UI, lots of uh, uh, interactive controls for it, and this is highly visual. Right after we finished the designs in Figma, I was able to pick it up, move it right into Flutterflow, and start translating everything right away. So um, we were really pleased that we were able to bring it in here without any kind of custom widgets or anything like that uh, and support a, a really beautiful UI. So inside of here, we've got lots of controls, little kind of hidden features throughout, lots of use of implicit animation in here to change state. Uh, and our development lead, Sean, he put in a lot of custom actions and behaviors in here to really help empower um, this experience we see before us here. The standout of this one has to be this custom thermostat control with this radial slider. Helps us adjust the temperature, and we have some really simple implicit animations in here for changing mode. So really simple effects um, to, to kind of great use here. And for our third one, third vignette, we were getting really comfortable with the platform by this point and having a lot of fun with it. So uh, we had a good core to base uh, to, to begin with here. So again, more kind of unique controls inside of the space. Had a lot of fun in here, building sort of a measuring tape style slider, and weight selector. And then we just kind of played with some, some fun components at the end just to experiment more with animations inside of the app. And at the end, if all goes right, you get a personalized membership card presented to you right in the app. So we've been genuinely impressed with the versatility of Flutterflow. And amazingly, we've only been at it for a few months. So, uh, it's opened up new ways for us to, to work, and our designers can obsess over the UI and experiment right in the, the project itself while freeing up the developers to focus on the advanced functionality and business logic. So I'll throw it back to Alex. Great. Thanks, Jared. So when the G Skinner team came to us with their ideas, I mean, first of all, yeah, we were blown away by what, the, what we just saw. I mean, really, really impressed with, with everything that they've done. And I have some good news on that front, which is that 
the, uh, all the vignettes that you just saw will be available for free on our marketplace for you to clone. So when we first talked to G. Skinner about their ideas, we knew that there was a lot that we needed to do. One of their common themes is building rich, tactile, and immersive experiences. And Flutterflow was not ready yet to support that. But that's why we're excited to announce today support for 50 new action triggers within the UI builder. Now you can support actions like drag, pan, scale, in order to enable some of these rich experiences that we just saw. But mouse clicks and finger taps are not the only ways that users interact with, with, their, with a product, right? Which is why we're also excited to announce today support for keyboard shortcuts within Flutterflow. Now you can easily add an action trigger and bind it to some shortcut keys so that it executes when a user en enters those keys. Uh, and I know for, for someone like myself who has developed these by hand in code, we all know how challenging and you know, difficult it can be to do these. So now you can create optimal shortcut experiences like the ones that you see here with just a few clicks of a button. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Leah to talk about best practices. Cool. So when I introduced app architecture, I said expressive UIs with best practices. We just talked about the UI piece. Now let's go over to best practices. So one of the core best practices when you learn software development is this dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. And that helps keep your app scalable and maintainable across your entire team. And there are a lot of ways that we can adhere to this principle when we're using Flutterflow. One way is to try to use dynamic widget property configurations. So if you've used Flutterflow, you're setting some properties, and you see that little orange toggle, and that allows you to dynamically configure the value based on some logic that you set. So if you've been using Flutterflow, you know just how powerful this feature is. The problem is that sometimes you go to use it only to realize that a property doesn't have that little orange toggle. So we're excited to announce today that over the next few weeks, nearly every single widget property is going to be dynamic. <laughs> and I'll just give you a quick example of how powerful this is. So one of the demos that Jared just showed was that smart home hub, and it's responsive. So when I change the screen size, the layout of the widgets change. Now, originally when they built this, they had to create different copies of their grid view because we didn't have the ability to dynamically set the axis. Now you'll be able to set the axis. You can choose if it should be horizontal or vertical based on whatever type of variable or logic you want to set. And we're not stopping there. We're also releasing a new widget, the flex widget, which allows you to flex between a row or a column, again, dynamically. So you can say, hey, when the screen size looks like this, I want to be a row, I want to be horizontal. Otherwise, I want it to be vertical. I want it to be a column. <laughs> Great. So now let's talk about another best practice, components. And I'll bring Alex back onto the stage to talk about that one. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks, Leah. Uh, so one of the best practices that we always are pushing for our users to use is to use components wherever, pos wherever possible, which is why we've been focused on making components as powerful as possible. So earlier this year, we launched recursive components which allow a widget or a component to leverage itself within the widget tree, allowing for more rich and complex experiences. We're also excited to announce more variable types. In line with what Leah was mentioning about more dynamic, uh, more type, more uh, properties being able to set from a variable, we're also adding new types to make components even more flexible. So things like main axis alignment on a row, or icon data, or even something like a text style being able to be passed in as a parameter to a component. However, there's still one piece that's missing, 
which is why we're excited to announce Widget Builder as a parameter. So you might be asking yourself, what the heck is a widget builder, right? So let's say that I want to make a component with uh, a nice layout. It has a background, uh, it has you know, animations, and I want to be able to use this consistently throughout my application, but what's actually in the component, I want to be dynamic. That's not something that's currently possible. Uh, but with the widget builder, you can pass in as a parameter what you want to actually place inside of that component. Now, I know uh, y'all don't want to just hear me talk about this, so uh, I'm excited now to invite Shovik onto the stage to give a demo. Thanks, Alex. So, hey, everyone. So here we are, uh, can you switch to the demo? So here we are inside the Smart Home Hub that we showed earlier. And as you can see throughout the app, uh, we have a number of different uh, smart devices over here on the dashboard. And throughout the UI, it's very consistent. All of them have a striped background. Uh, all of them have an icon on the corner. But the UI looks completely uh, consistent throughout the app. Cool, yeah. Well, maybe let's take a look uh, at the project and dive into one of these uh, components. Sure, let's go back to the Flutterflow Builder. And we're currently looking at the smart device style widget. Nice, yeah, and what's going on here in the, in the widget tree? Yeah, sure, let's go through the widget tree of this component. So we have mainly a gradient stack over here which contains a title gradient which basically sets the background color for this. And then we have the tile design stack. And this has like a stripe background, a device icon, and a tile builder. Nice, so where is the tile builder actually coming from? Yeah, great question. So let's step back and look at the component parameters. And as you can see over here, we have a tile builder which has the type uh, widget builder. That's cool, okay, so yeah, let's go into the properties of, of the uh, tile widget and see what's going on. Yeah, sure, let's get back to the tile builder that we have already uh, inserted in our widget tree over here. And let's look at the properties panel over here. And um, as you can see, like um, we currently have the temperature tile set over here. And you can kind of preview and like pass components and preview on the canvas. So let's change it to a different component maybe, let's say TV tile. And you would see it right on the canvas and yeah. Okay, cool, so you can use this and pass in whatever you want in, in, elsewhere in the builder, but this allows you to kind of preview whatever component you want while you're building the actual component. Yeah, absolutely correct. Very cool. Um, so we already have one here, but what if I wanna add a new widget builder onto the page? Yeah, that's a great question again. So let me get back to the, uh, so basically it's uh, just like adding any other component uh, inside Flutterflow, so you can just head over to the widget palette over here, and they would, then I would go to the component section here, and you would see all the widget builders right over here, and you can just use any, like any other component in Flutterflow. Awesome, thanks, Shovik. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, cool. that, I'll kick it back over to Leah. <laughs> 